the Elegoo Mars 4 Max. Who cares? When I agree to do product reviews, I always like to ask myself, who's going to care about this? I get offered a huge amount of random stuff, and usually it's quite easy to see that you, my viewers, are not going to be particularly interested in electric eyelash curlers or chandeliers. Yes, I have been offered both of those things. However, with some 3D printers, it's more of a difficult decision. I recently reviewed the GTEC Alcade. This is a $99 resin 3D printer, which is obviously going to be of interest to anybody looking for a cheap 3D printer. When Elegoo offered me the Mars 4 Max, I again asked myself, who cares? And the answer wasn't quite so clear. On paper, this, despite its name, is what I would call a medium-sized resin 3D printer. It has what is currently a slightly better than average 6K LCD monochrome screen, and considering the spec, a relatively low price. So it's not the biggest, it's not the highest quality, and it's not the cheapest. But at around $300, I think it could still be a good option for a beginner printer, if it performs well. With all that in mind, I agreed to try it out and see how it performs. Elegoo sent me this Mars 4 Max, I didn't buy it, but as with all my videos, they have absolutely zero influence over the video content and all opinions that are expressed are my own. If by the end of the video you decide you want to buy one for yourself, then check out the links and discount codes in the description. The first thing I liked about this Elegoo machine was the way that it was packaged. Getting these resin 3D printers out of the box can sometimes be quite tricky, but the flat foam sections made it really easy to just slide it out. The other bonus is that these flat foam sheets are way more useful than the bespoke shaped polystyrene that you normally get, and I was able to give these to a friend to reuse in their eBay business rather than just throwing them in the bin. In the past, one of my biggest criticisms of resin 3D printers is that you need to buy a lot of other stuff before you can get started. Elegoo have done a good job of trying to rectify that by supplying quite a few accessories in the box. With the Mars 4 Max you get a plastic scraper, some gloves, a few tools and spare fixings, some filters, and a metal scraper. As long as you have some resin then you have everything you need to be able to get your first print complete and off of the build plate. You'll then need some way to clean your print, but we'll get to that later. As always with resin printers, the first thing to do after removing the protective films is to attach and level the build plate. The build plate needs to be completely parallel to the LCD screen, but it also needs to be the right distance to allow for the transparent film at the bottom of your resin vat, known as the FEP or FEP sheet. Elegoo recommend using the included instruction card as a spacer once you've loosened the ball joint and homed the Z-axis. Once it starts moving, you hold the plate down and tighten the fixings. I did this once and only once because it was perfect following the guide. I then raised the Z-axis, fitted the resin vat, and I was ready to start printing. Before I did though, I fitted the included USB powered carbon air filter. This is a simple little device that circulates the air inside the print chamber through an activated carbon filter to effectively remove some of the smells that you can get from the resin. If you have one, don't be tempted to plug anything else into the USB port though. It's wired to 24 volts and not the usual five volts for USB. Whatever else you plug in is likely to have a bad day. The fan that circulates the air in the filter only runs when the print's running, so it's not on all of the time, which is good. Elegoo also sent me their Space Grey 8K resin, so this is what I started with. There's only one pre-sliced model on the USB stick for you to print, which is this Test Rook. This completed perfectly and was pretty easy to remove from the build plate with the included metal scraper. To be able to print anything else, I'd need to slice a model with some slicing software. Included on the USB stick is a version of Voxel Dance Tango, which you can activate using your machine ID, which you can find in the system menu. Voxel Dance Tango is usually paid software, and coincidentally, I'd actually been sent a full version of it to test before I'd received the Elegoo machine. But that's not the version that you get supplied with, so I uninstalled it and installed the Elegoo version. I've previously used Chitubox and Lychee, and honestly, I find the Voxel Dance software to be a little bit clunky. It's not bad software, it works very well, but for me, I just didn't find it very intuitive to use. You may have a different experience, I suppose it all comes down to what you're used to using. If this is your first 3D printer, then you're going to have to get used to using some slicing software, and there's not really any reason why it shouldn't be Voxel Dance Tango. You won't have to deal with the annoying adverts that you get with the free version of Lychee if you do, but it also has its own quirks too. I do actually prefer the automatic support with Tango versus Lychee. The only print failures I had while testing this machine were when I was using Lychee and the parts actually pulled away from the supports because they just weren't strong enough. 
the exact same file slice with Tango worked fine, so I'll probably continue to use it while I don't have to pay for it. To find the ideal exposure time for this resin, I printed a couple of quick test models, starting with Elegoo's recommended 2.5 second exposure time. Personally, I found this a little bit underexposed, so I increased the exposure time to three seconds, which worked well. Using my three second exposure time, I printed this lion from Gem Lucky, who has some great free models on Colts 3D. I've linked to their page in the description if you want to try any of their models for yourself. One big test for quality on resin 3D printers is to print large, curved, smooth surfaces. This lion's back is a great place to look for any evidence of the printer's limitations when it comes to quality, but it looks pretty flawless to me. As I couldn't find any fault with the lion, I decided to print something with even more smooth surfaces so that I could really see what the Mars 4 Max can do. This kitsune from that Josh guy should show some more detail, and I actually sliced this one with Lychee, as I was finding learning new software a bit time consuming and I was more familiar with Lychee. To save on resin, I wanted to hollow the model and then add some drain holes to remove any uncured resin from the inside. As I didn't want these drain holes showing, I raised the model from the build plate and then put the drain holes in the base. Unfortunately, this one failed because the model pulled away from the supports. Thankfully, the failed print was easy to remove, but unless I could be sure that there were no chunks of cured resin under the surface, I'd have to drain down the vat to check. After gently feeling around for any lumps with the plastic scraper, I decided I just couldn't risk damaging the FEPS sheet and I'd need to drain the vat down. This is when I found out that the slight spout shape in one corner of the vat isn't the best for pouring out the resin in a controlled way. I ended up spilling quite a bit of the resin and making a mess that took quite a while to clean up. Not to mention the wasted resin that I then had to cure before disposing of it properly. Once I'd finally cleaned up my mess, I tried again. This time I gave in and placed the model on the build plate and just put the drain holes in an inconspicuous place low down at the back. I love the way this one turned out and it's models like these that make me want to learn how to paint so that I can actually do them justice. Again, it's very hard to find fault with the quality, but if we look really closely, it's possible to see some slight ringing on vertical surfaces. What we're seeing here is a direct result of pixel size. The Elegoo Mars 4 Max has a pixel size of 34 microns. If you wanted to get smoother surfaces than this, and I'm not really sure why you'd need to, then you need to use a printer that has a higher resolution, giving smaller pixel sizes. Some resin 3D printers have a pixel size as small as 18 microns, but don't expect that to look twice as good. The general consensus is that we can't really see any difference once you get below about 35 microns, so the Mars 4 Max could be right on the money. There are some slicer tricks that you can do to try and smooth things out a little bit, but quite frankly, the quality is excellent. This ringing is really difficult to show on camera, and I can't feel it at all. I was fortunate enough that Elegoo also sent me a Mercury Plus wash and cure machine, and this is what I use to clean up my printed parts. If you've never used a wash and cure machine, first you place your parts in a basket that lowers into a container that you fill with a solution that cleans off the uncured resin. I used IPA or denatured alcohol here, but there are other options. You then set a timer and the liquid is gently swirled around to remove all of the uncured resin. Once you've dried your model off, you switch the container for a turntable and the print is fully cured by powerful UV LEDs as the model is rotated. The Mercury Plus did all of this really well and a wash and cure machine can be a great time saver if you plan on doing any quantity of resin printing. I printed a few more models with the Elegoo 8K grey resin, which I have to say was great, but then I switched to a clear blue from Sunlu. Sunlu have started sending me 3D printer filament to use in my videos, but this is the first time that I've had resin from them. The Sunlu bottles are a different shape to most with an offset neck, which makes pouring from a full bottle much more controlled. You also get some free filters in the box, which can come in handy when pouring any unused resin back into the bottle. When the prints first complete with this clear blue, they look fantastic. As with all of these transparent resins, the finish does go matte once you've cleaned all the uncured resin off, but it only takes a quick spray of some lacquer to bring the shine back. I managed some very intricate detail with the Mars 4 Max and Sunlu resin combination, and I think my favourite has to be this wave stand, which is great for displaying any particularly high quality benches. Thanks to the Beagle 2 camera, I also managed to get some great time-lapse footage too. If you want to see how this is done, I'll put a link in the description to this video once it's released. 
So now we have a good number of prints complete, it's time to list some of the pros and cons for the Elegoo Mars 4 Max 3D printer. For the positives, there are a lot of things to choose from. The print quality is great. At the end of the day, surely quality and price are the main things that matter, and at under $300, I don't think you'll find better quality for the money. I like the packaging, and there's a good simple manual that's easy to follow when getting set up. The touch screen is easy and simple to use, the ball joint that's used for the build plate is simple and secure, and the way the resin vat locates on recess holes is nice too. The USB powered air filter is great for keeping the unpleasant chemical smells at bay, and there's an easy to remove panel in the cover if you want to attach a vent hose to take things further. The sandblasted build plate gives a lot of grip, but I'm still working on the best settings for getting prints to release. Unfortunately, I've marked it by trying to remove some particularly stubborn models, but this should clean up okay if I need it to. One other small detail that I really like is once your print is finished, everything turns off except for the LCD screen. There are no constantly running fans when the power's on like there are with some other 3D printers, which makes me more comfortable with leaving it for a few hours after an overnight print is finished, rather than rushing to get it turned off. I know that it's not going to be sitting there making noise and using power when it doesn't need to be. When it comes to cons, I'm going to have to get really picky. Firstly, the vat doesn't pour very well. When you pour resin out of the vat, which you do need to do quite often, you don't want any of the resin finding its way underneath and onto the underside of the FEP sheet. As we saw, the way the resin pours out of the vat can cause a bit of a mess, and it would be nice if there were a better shaped spout to help avoid this. Also, while we're being super picky, I don't like the power, switch, and USB port located on the side. On some machines, everything's located on the back, which does make plugging in the USB more tricky, but it also means that you can have things closer up to the side of your printer. Also, some may find the 150mm or 6 inch Z height to be a little small, particularly for a printer with the word Max in its name, but personally, I struggle to think of any resin prints that I've done that are bigger than this. I asked at the beginning of the video, who cares? Well, I do. I think that the Elegoo Mars 4 Max is actually my new favourite resin 3D printer. Yes, I have a bigger machine, and yes, I have a cheaper machine, but if I could only pick one 3D printer to buy, then I'd get this one. Now whether the price is within your budget is a decision only you can make, but if you do want to spend up to $300 on a resin 3D printer, you can't go wrong with this one. Remember to check out the links in the description for a good deal that also gives me a little bit of support with no additional cost to you, so it's a great way to support the channel. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and click one of these two now if you want to see another video that you'll like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.